a school shooting in Texas, a monkeypox outbreak, and did Hillary Clinton coordinate the Trump-Russia collusion conspiracy? That and more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Matt Ganesta, filling in for Chris Chappell. A mass shooter killed 19 children and two teachers at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. I'm not going to go into too many details because you already know the details. We've seen this type of story enough to know how it all plays out. Those on the left say guns are a problem and we have to act now, while those on the right say guns aren't the problem, it's a lack of religion, moral values, and mental health support. They reach a stalemate, nothing happens, and these types of stories and reactions play on in an endless loop. The media have a field day covering these stories, plastering the killers' names and faces on every channel, despite experts warning that media contagion is a factor in mass shootings and strongly warn against giving killers any notoriety. But hey, why try that when these stories get such good ratings? When it comes to mass shootings in America, We're living in such a Groundhog Day, I'm shocked I don't bump into Ned Ryerson every morning on my way to work. Speaking of work, Vice President Kamala Harris and the U.S. Surgeon General warned that American healthcare workers are experiencing burnout over the COVID pandemic. And not the same burnout every American is experiencing over the COVID pandemic. Two and a half years of that being the only thing Fox and CNN talked about will do that to you. They said the U.S. could face a shortage of 3 million essential low-wage health workers in the next five years. Now, I'm no psychologist, but maybe if you want to attract someone to a job that's considered essential, you shouldn't have the phrase low-wage in the title. Speaking of people leaving their jobs, a Russian diplomat to the U.N. quit over Russia's war in Ukraine. Not only did he quit, he also wrote a letter harshly criticizing his country's leadership. Of course, letters criticizing Putin are usually just seen as suicide notes. I can't believe someone who takes pictures like this would be insecure. In his letter, the diplomat said, I have never been so ashamed of my country. Meanwhile, countless Americans who lived through the botched pullout of Afghanistan, multiple out-of-touch corrupt leaders, and the masked singer coming back for an eighth season said, ashamed of your country, huh? First time. But according to the director of the White House National Economic Council, We at least have no need to fear a possible recession. He said that our economy is just in a period of transition. Yeah, transitioning into a recession. That's what we're afraid of. This is like telling kids afraid of monsters under their bed. Don't worry, right now you're in a period of pre-digestion. Sleep tight. Also, President Biden used to say that inflation was transitory. That was a year ago. How long is something in transition before it's just the norm? But hey, at least CEO pay is up 17%, thanks to their salaries being tied to profits and stocks, which rebounded as America reopened during the pandemic last year. Is workers pay up that much? Nope. But hey, at least the CEOs finally got a break. President Biden also said that we're in a state of transition when it comes to gas prices. And when it comes to the gas prices, Uh, We're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that, God willing, when it's over, we'll be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels when this is over. So for those of you who've lost work or opportunities because you can't afford to fill your gas tank anymore, take solace in knowing that at least people with Teslas are doing just fine. Plus, when this is all over, Elon Musk will be even richer. Doesn't that make your sacrifice worth it? At least he finally got a break. I'll be right back with more. Welcome back. The FDA said it will decide within the next few weeks if children under the age of five will be authorized to receive a COVID vaccine booster shot. This is after the FDA decided last week to approve emergency use of the Pfizer booster shots in children ages five to 11. The CDC director said, with over 18 million doses administered in this age group, We know that these vaccines are safe and we must continue to increase the number of children who are protected. 
and Pfizer said their booster shot is safe and effective for kids aged six months to five years. Well, there you go. The company producing the vaccine that stands to make a ton of money off the vaccine, should it work, says the vaccine works. I'm convinced. Listen, I know they do a lot of research and due diligence because they care about not getting sued. Using them as your main source of information is kind of like Marlboro saying, our research shows that cigarettes totally protect kids under five from not looking cool as heck. But who cares about COVID because there's a fresh new virus in town, monkeypox. Okay, monkeypox isn't exactly new, but it's making a comeback like nose rings, long acrylic fingernails, and Middle Eastern extremists plotting to assassinate George W. Bush. It's the early 2000s all over again. A monkeypox outbreak has been recorded in several WHO member states where the disease is non-endemic. But you don't have to worry about this becoming pandemic too, pandemic year, because the WHO says, while this outbreak is unusual, it is containable. Transmission is really happening from close physical contact, skin to skin contact. So it's not, it's, it's quite different than COVID in that sense. And the thing I just wanna say here is that this is a containable situation, um, particularly in the countries like where we are seeing these outbreaks that are happening across Europe, uh, in, in uh, um, North America as well. And who can be trusted to contain a virus from spreading around the globe? That wasn't a statement, it was actually a question because the answer definitely isn't the World Health Organization. So how did this monkeypox outbreak happen? It's theorized that someone or some ones infected with monkeypox likely spread it to others at two raves in Europe, which is the second biggest reason I never go to European raves. The biggest reason? I'm not cool enough to get invited. If only the FDA authorized emergency use of Marlboro when I was under five, maybe I would have turned out cooler. Lung cancer is apparently super cool. The CDC warned that members of the LGBTQ community are at higher risk of becoming infected, with one of their chief medical officers saying, anyone, anyone can develop and spread monkeypox infection, but many of those affected in the current global outbreak identified as gay and bisexual men. And the WHO said that this monkeypox outbreak is primarily spreading through sexual contact. So at the very least, we don't have to worry about people who use Reddit getting it. The U.S. is responding to this outbreak by releasing doses of a smallpox vaccine that the CDC believes can be effective against monkeypox as well. A deputy director at the CDC said, right now we have over a thousand doses of that available and we expect that level to ramp up very quickly in the coming weeks as the company provides more doses to us. And in the hopes that people will actually take this vaccine, officials told Bill Gates to keep his mouth shut about monkeypox. No one cares what you have to say and we already have enough conspiracy theories to deal with. And after the break, the California governor threatens to limit water. Welcome back. California Governor Gavin Newsom warned he would order limits on water usage if residents and businesses didn't do more to conserve water during an ongoing drought in the region. And he made good on that warning days later. While it sucks having your water supply limited, it helps knowing that all California residents and officials are in this together. Isn't that right, Governor Newsom? Uh, Gavin, where'd you go? Oh, come on. You and your lobbyist friends are having a water balloon fight at the French Laundry? How did I not see that coming? Let's talk about something a little less divisive. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. If you're annoyed that people still aren't over the 2020 election, guess what? People aren't even over the 2016 election. Michael Sussman, a lawyer for the Hillary Clinton 2016 presidential campaign, is on trial for allegedly lying to the FBI while trying to link the Trump Organization to Alpha Bank in Russia. He supposedly did this to create an October surprise for Trump's campaign just before the 2016 election. The FBI looked into Sussman's allegation but didn't find any links between Trump and Alpha Bank. The prosecutors are saying Sussman lied by not disclosing to the FBI that he worked on Hillary Clinton's campaign. Sussman says he wasn't representing the campaign during the meeting and was coming to them solely as a concerned citizen, which as everyone in the comments of the previous video we did on this said, makes Sussman pretty sus, man. At the trial, Clinton's former campaign manager, Robbie Mook, testified that Hillary Clinton herself 
agreed to give information about the supposed Trump-Russia link to reporters, even though they didn't know whether there was really a link, and of course there turned out not to be. This was done around the same time Sussman took these Trump-Russia allegations to the FBI, but he says the Clinton campaign didn't know he was doing that. So essentially, the story is that the Clinton campaign found a possible link between Trump and a Russian bank. They brought it to the press, who had an absolute field day with it, even though the information turned out to be false. At the same time, Michael Sussman, solely on his own, brought the same information to the FBI as a concerned citizen without any coordination or knowledge from the Clinton campaign. That's incredibly hard to believe. But hey, maybe he's not lying. Maybe this is just a period of transition for the truth. If Hillary Clinton was in on this, it shows a deliberate attempt from a presidential candidate to try and discredit a political opponent using the FBI and the press, which looks really bad, but also only like the 11th most egregious thing Hillary Clinton has ever been accused of. Donald Trump responded to this by saying, For three years, I had to fight her off and fight those crooked people off, and you'll never get your reputation fully back. This is one of the greatest political scandals in history. One of the greatest political scandals in history? That statement would have a lot more weight if we didn't hear left-leaning media say that about everything Trump did during his term. Big Macs at the White House. This is the greatest political scandal in history. Speaking of the White House, President Biden is welcoming some special guests there. May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and President Biden cares deeply about stopping anti-Asian hate, which is why Biden is inviting South Korean boy band BTS to the White House. Yes, because that's who will have some real perspective on anti-Asian hate, the most beloved pop group in the world. Maybe Biden thinks BTS will help him reach the youths. Or this is just more proof that, as I have long suspected, the Biden administration is secretly run by Tumblr. It would honestly explain so much. Either that or there's a big K-pop stand in Biden's cabinet. My money's on Attorney General Merrick Garland. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Or join our exclusive censorship-free social media community on Locals. Check out americauncovered.locals.com. Once again, I'm Matt Ganezda. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.